in the athletics and recreation department based on the Brantford campus. Um, and I support all things recreational programming, special events, and social media and marketing management. Um, we're going to do a little round table here to introduce everybody else who is joining me today. I can go next. I'm the other Megan, Megan M. Um, I am a second year social work student on the Brantford campus, and I'm also minoring in Indigenous Studies and Youth and Children's Studies. I'm super excited to be here talking to you all today about our wonderful athletics on the Brantford campus. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a third year in criminology, minoring in forensics, and I have a certificate in global crime and justice. Um, I was also the flag football in the flag football team um, in December. And I'm really excited to be here. Hi, my name is Jade. Um, I'm in my third year of social work on the Brantford campus. I'm also getting minors in Indigenous Studies and Child and Youth Studies. Um, in terms of athletics and recreation, I was on the dance team this year and all the years since my first one. Um, and I also take a lot of classes at the Y. So excited to tell everyone about that. Finally, uh, my name is Anis, and I'm in fourth year game design and development with a criminology minor. And with athletics and recreations uh, in my first year, I was actually part of the cross country varsity team. So if you have any questions on that, I can answer. And before we get started, I'd just to give us a little land acknowledgement. And I'd just like to say that um, both Laurier uh, campuses on the Waterloo and Bramford are on the home track and it is a land, uh, the traditional land of the neutrals, Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee's people. And it is, it is uh, something small, but we do like to symbolize and respect that we are on their land and share and re recognize that we are on their land and respect that. Um, no matter where we are, and if you're in Bramford or Waterloo, that this land um, should be treated with respect. And no matter what, you'll see that on Laurier Bramford campus that we have lots of resources as well that can learn more about the Indigenous culture. Um, and I, with that being said, we could get started. Awesome. I'm just going to share my screen here for you folks. I do have a little presentation. Um, there we go. Um, for us. So uh, as I work through this, uh, we do welcome questions. So you'll notice at the bottom of your Zoom control, um, there is a chat function as well as a Q&A function. We encourage you to use the Q&A function. Um, and I will leave tons of space at the end of this session so that we can uh, dive right into those questions that you have for us, whether I can speak in greater detail to the presentation, uh, or if you would like to involve some of these uh, amazing students to speak more about their experiences. So, um, as I've reiterated, if you're maybe just jumping in now, you are in the athletics and recreation session based on the Brantford campus. Um, I have been with the department for over eight years now, so and I was a Golden Hawk prior to uh, my employment here, so I live and breathe purple and gold as well as the athletics and recreation world. Um, so as I've mentioned with the Brantford focus, um, I'd like to introduce you to our Laurier Brantford YMCA. This is our uh, House of Athletics and Recreation on the Brantford campus and uh, is the first of its kind, a 50-50 shared partnership between a university and um, the Brantford, Burlington, and Hamilton uh, district of YMCAs. There are lots of partnerships and collaborations with other institutions, but never in a 50-50 shared partnership. So we are very grateful for this facility. It reopened um, its doors after a very long overdue construction phase in 2018. Um, and just to list a few of the amazing amenities in this space, it includes a, a double gym as well as a single gym, uh, housing a lot of our programming that we will speak to a little bit more in detail after. Um, three dance and aerobic studios, which are focused on our group exercise as well as um, sport team practicing. Two floors of a fitness center uh, with state-of-the-art uh, weight training equipment as well as cardio equipment and tons of excessive um, or sorry, accessory space, uh, full aquatic center, which includes a sauna and a hot tub on the pool deck as well. 
an awesome exclusive student lounge located on our top floor, um, which in this photo here, the image that you're seeing, that is our fourth floor. Our facility is actually built into an escarpment. So you really only see a portion of it, uh, depending on which angle you are standing. And then uh, the unique part of our partnership is that there is child and youth programming available in our space. So as maybe a a more mature student that is coming in with a pre-existing family, or um, if you have a child uh, that you are looking for some support while also um, taking on the challenge of school, our facility and some of our programs are here to help um, with that transition for you. Um, speaking a little bit more to the programs that we offer, so um, Anas, featured the varsity program. So a lot of point of contention with people is the misunderstanding between the Waterloo campus and the Brantford campus varsity sport program. So um, we are not allowed to compete in the same athletic organization. So our Waterloo teams participate in the OUA, whereas our Brantford teams compete in the OCAA. So Ontario Colleges Athletics Association. Um, and we currently uh, support two varsity programs on our campus, which would be the cross country program and the indoor soccer program, both supported for male and female teams. Um, and they are tournament based sports. So uh, different to some of the league programs that a lot of people might identify varsity programs as, uh, this is a very interesting and unique way to integrate our students into a high level competitive program but with a slightly lower commitment um, level in terms of consistent games throughout the week. Uh, these are just tournament based that happen a few times each season. Our recreational program, we like to, uh, our goal is that we can offer a spectrum of programs from self-driven programs of you just coming in and using the space yourself, all the way up to highly organized recreational teams. So I'll just feature a few of them here. They're very snapshotted there in that list, but intramurals would be a weekly uh, league that you would sign up either on your own or with a team of friends, whether that's in your residence building or a group of people that you've maybe connected with in your class um, and compete on a weekly basis in a very recreational um, space. A uh, little higher than that would be our organized sport clubs. They are student run uh, and led by student presidents and executive teams and are truly housed based out of passion. Um, two of these girls here, um, Sarah and Jade can both speak to that with their chaos dance experience and their women's flight football experience. Both of those are sport clubs on the Brantford campus. Um, and then all the way up to extramurals. So extramurals are our competitive organized recreational teams uh, you do try out for the team, you make the team, it is coached, and you travel to a couple tournaments against other colleges and universities in Ontario uh, throughout the year as well. So it, it is definitely a scaled down skill and commitment level from our varsity programs, but a great alternative if you're still looking for something to engage yourself in terms of competition. In addition, we host a lot of amazing programs and activities out of our aquatic center, such as some hydrotherapy um, or some aquafit classes. And our group exercise um, program is very diverse with a variety of different um, fitness classes that are led not only by student instructors, but also um, some highly skilled instructors within our Brantford community. All of these programs are included in your um, commitment as a student on campus, and you have access to these facilities and these programs with your one card, and it is all looped in through your auxiliary fees as a student. So you don't have to worry about walking into our door and purchasing a separate membership in order to use these spaces or to access some of these programs. Uh, depending on the registration process, some of these do have an additional registration fee. Uh, but they are all Laurier specific programs and are only available to you. So that is a little exclusive bonus within this space. I said I was going to keep this nice and short and sweet because I really want you to hear the valuable experiences and to have space to ask some questions for us. Um, but I will leave you off with our social media um, accounts because in the modern day that we live today, uh, we definitely support a lot of information sharing and relationship building through these platforms. So we encourage you to check us out on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, and our shared YouTube channel with our Waterloo campus, as well as our brand new website. So we have um, expanded and grown into our own little Brantford identity, um, and our digital space is now brantford.laureathletics.com. 
and you will find way more information about our programs and some of our teams available on there. So I am going to open the floor to any questions here. So um, I'm actually going to stop sharing this because I know sometimes you can't see as many beautiful faces on here. And then we can open ourselves up to some questions. If anybody has them, or just a reminder to please plop them in the Q&A section on the bottom of this Zoom tab. Um, or if you would like to, we welcome to raise a hand or to just unmute yourself and pop into the conversation too. So I am noticing that we do have one question so far in the Q&A. Um, so how do you qualify for a varsity team? So I'll maybe give some brief admin portions of that and then I'll open that up to Anas to speak too. So um, first and foremost, we do host open tryouts for all of our varsity programs. And those tryout dates are posted in late summer, early fall. So you don't have to stress too much about, you know, introducing yourself to coaches before stepping foot on campus. Um, keep an eye on our website and our social media platforms in order to keep up to date on those tryout dates. Um, there are also coaching informations listed on our website if you would like to reach out to them in advance. But um, Anas, maybe you can speak to some of the things that helped you prepare for varsity tryouts. Oh, my experience was actually really uh, different as in <clears throat> applying for a varsity team as in cross country was um, I was doing orientation week as a first year, just enjoying an event. And one of the cross uh, country people, like, I saw the cross country team just running and uh, one of them went up to me randomly. He was like, hey, do you run? I'm like, sometimes they're like, join the team. We have training, we have practice right now. And I was like, uh, I guess I like running, sure. And then I ran home, I skipped the orientation week event, ran back, I joined the team, uh, the cross country tryouts and then um, they're like, yeah, you caught, you stuck with the team. You kept up with the team. You had the stamina to keep up with the team. I um, will take you for uh, you, like you're in, you're on the varsity team. And I was like, wow, that, that, that felt so weird because I just felt pressured into doing it. Went for it. Didn't know that I liked running and then didn't even think I was going to get accepted. But they were like, yeah, you're on the team. And I, then I spent uh, my week's training and going to races, of course. But after getting into the varsity team, there's also other ways. Like I know after first year, I sadly stopped going to cross country, but um, I've actually been in contact with my uh, coach still. And sometimes I've actually recommended uh, people to go to my coach uh, through Instagram. I've even got people to apply for varsity, uh, varsity teams as well. So um, like coaches here, like they just want to meet you. I say if you're going your ways to apply for a verse team, just have a one-on-one -on -one with the coach, talk with the coach, talk about your interests. And that's like the best way to get started in my opinion. But don't feel pressured to do that. You don't actually have to apply to a team. There's no pre-registration or anything for our tryouts. You just need to show up. So um, have the passion, hopefully have some skill behind that passion to get yourself started. It is an elite level um, league. Um, but we are obviously open to engaging as many student athletes as possible. So, Speaking of which, maybe because we do have a few of you with such vast um, athletics experience and we don't have any questions currently, um, maybe Sarah, do you want to talk about your flag football experience? Um, so to give some background information before Sarah speaks, the flag football team actually hasn't existed for the past few years. Um, because like I've said, with sport clubs, they are student run. So um, it is a, an awesome opportunity for student leadership, but it is also very reliant on student leadership. So being able to have, bring that club back to life this year was really great. Um, and Sarah, maybe you can speak to that a little bit more. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed being on flight football. Unfortunately, we didn't get to play games because it was in December and we went back into lockdown. Um, but before then, it was honestly so fun. Um, we had two students who were our like coaches, and then we had two student presidents. Uh, we had quite a large team, so a lot of positions were doubled. Like there was myself and another girl were, were quarterbacks. Um, but it was honestly just so fun. I never thought that I would want to play flag, to be honest. And then I went for the tryout, and I thought it was so much fun. And 
everyone there is supporting you. No one's going to be like, you're too slow. Get out of here. <laughs> They're all there to support you. And it was, it was a really great experience. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> what about yourself, Jade, with chaos? Um, so I didn't actually know in my first year that there was a dance team on the Brantford campus. Um, so in, during a week, we had a little fair set up at the YMCA as one of the a week events. And when I went there, there were some people actually recruiting dancers. So it was really exciting for me to be able to um, see that that existed. Um, and once I was on the team, it was really great to just have people that like I had so much in common with. Um, and kind of opened it up to getting to know people who were in higher grades than I was. Because um, I know in first year, you kind of get to know all the first years that are on your residence floor, or on your, like with you in Locust, that kind of thing. But it was really helpful to get to spend some time with them. Um, people who had a little bit more experience in university um, and also had stuff in common with me. So it was really great. As much as our, a lot of our recreational and even, you know, elite level varsity programs are focused around the sport, um, the biggest payout and benefit to them is that social network that you build, right? And to have that outlet and those connections that not only take you throughout the semester or the year that you're involved in it, but literally grow, you know, past that. Some of my best friends were ones that I met while playing in intramural league in second year of university, so... Um, we do have another varsity question here. I'm not sure if the like the live stream gets to see these, so I will read them all out loud. Um, does varsity consist of a lot of travel outside of Ontario? Um, so elaborating a little bit more on the tournament style. So the varsity team attends three invitational tournaments, um, which are races, uh, and they are normally located within about a two hour radius of um, our Brantford location. Uh, after the invitationals, they do attend a um, provincial championship, which is consists of all of the schools that have varsity cross country teams in our Ontario league. Um, and again, that is normally hosted relatively close to us. Um, if our team then progresses past provincials, which for the past few years they have, because we have had an, a very outstanding high level um, amount of runners, they do qualify for nationals. So that's all of Canada. And that varies depending on which region is responsible for hosting in that year. It does rotate um, north, south, east, and west. Uh, we do sometimes travel quite a distance. So um, I think the one I went to was in the Grand Prairies, Alberta. It was negative 40 degrees outside and my camera froze four times while trying to photograph the event. Um, so we do definitely travel. Um, the travel expenses are covered by the university as part of our national championship portfolio, which is incredible. And we are very grateful for that. Um, but it is relatively local. They are one day events um, and they do consume up the full day typically. So Megan, you said that you use the facility a lot. What is your favorite part of the Laurier Brantford YMCA? I really do like all the amazing gym equipment that they have there. There are two different floors. One, um, a lot of myself and a lot of other ambassadors call it cardio land because um, it has a lot of treadmills and bikes um, and smaller weights. And then there's the third floor where we actually have the heavier weights, as Megan Jacqueline was saying earlier, um, has benches and squat racks and the heavier weights. Um, another thing that I really do enjoy on the third floor is our cycle fit studio that um, there's a ton of different classes that you can partake in. And again, everything um, is available to you as a Laurier student. So if you want to join the cycle fit um, that I have, or we also have like yoga and Pilates as well and other studios throughout the YMCA, um, those are all available to you to join. And it's definitely a great experience. I'm going to ask a question to all of you. Do any of you use the uh, Hawk's Nest, the student lounge on the fourth floor? Yeah. Oh, good. That makes me really happy to hear that. Um, we're really proud of that space and to be able to offer that space for people to come and do group work with their friends or their classmates or to just casually hang out um, after a workout. 
Um, and it is bright and airy, like I had shown on that photo in the fourth floor, it is surrounded by windows. So it's a really cool space. If you ever visit the Brantford campus, I definitely encourage you to come take a tour of our facility. Uh, it is award-winning. It has won some awards in the athletic business uh, category, which is um, Canadian and American gold standard for athletic facilities, which is incredible. Um, and it truly is four floors of integrated community and student space. Um, so we are very proud of it. We'd like to see a little bit more gold and purple throughout the space. We're working on that. There's a lot of lime green, um, but, uh, but we hope that you find a home in that facility and through the athletics and recreation programming. So. Just a reminder um, folks, if you are hopping in that question and answer feature at the very bottom, happy to answer any outstanding questions. Another thing that I'd love to add about the Y, um, it does host a lot of employment opportunities. If you are looking to uh, work while you're studying and you're super into sports, it's kind of a great um, opportunity for you. Um, they're always hosting, especially lifeguards. You can work in the aquatics or on the weights floor um, or just at their, their main desk um, on the main floor as well. So definitely lots of opportunities to work. And to add to that, some of our hiring timelines are a little weird if you're not used to kind of the school student hiring system. So if you are coming in as a first year student and you are looking for some part time employment, um, there is a lot of opportunity within our facility spaces and roles um, in terms of athletics programming or events and getting involved in those. We do sometimes host some sporadic in season hiring. Um, that would more likely support some of the event side rather than any of the leadership opportunities. And then at the end of your year, so around this time, actually next week, we are posting our open opportunities for next year. Um, we hire before you leave for the end of the year. So then that way we can get you trained up over the summer and hit the ground running in some awesome program leadership supervising roles um, that truly give you the hands-on experience that you wouldn't get within the athletics and recreation realm somewhere else. So thank you, Megan, for adding that. It's very valuable information. I also just want to add how important the YMCA was to me when training in cross country, whether it would be like at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Um, our coach would get us to go in and use the gym. Not only uh, it was one of the first times I've actually ever ran in water um, where um, our one of our trainings was using the uh, swimming pools, which are actually perfect for uh, it's Olympic. Uh, I forgot the a second word, but it's Olympic class or Olympic style um pools where um they're used for, uh, where you can use them professionally and that's um when we were walking yeah half size olympic there we go thank you so it's half size olympic to where it'd be perfect for training and and when i got it we had it where cross country rented out lanes while people could still leisure swim and still do their training but we had one lane specifically for us and just running from the shallow end to the deep end First time I ever ran in water, didn't think it was possible. First time I ever sweat while I was swimming, but it was a very great time. The resources we have just keeps you entertained. Like after swimming, we, you can literally just go to the hot tub and the sauna, which is really nice if you prefer that. Um, especially like after training, your just body's just sore and you want to like get the hot water going. You want to get into the hot tub. And not only that, like how we mentioned Cardio Land has, uh, or well, we ambassadors like to call Cardio Land, the cardio aspect of the YMCA, uh, the screens are really helpful for, for motivation as well when training, uh, especially sometimes on the varsity team, you're told to train um, certain days um, without the team. And those days are kind of hard because it's hard to have motivation when you're training alone. Um, watching movies, listening to music, and are this possible at the YMCA with those cardio machines? So just having a show on Netflix or Disney Plus, um, or just listening to music, your favorite song on Spotify to hump, uh, hype you up while running on the treadmill was really helpful for me to keep my motivation um, to improve in cross country as well. I think that's one of my favorite features about some of the cardio machines we got. All of them have their own personal TVs that are capable of Netflix, Disney, and Spotify, which is awesome. So you won't actually see any large scale TVs playing daily soap operas or anything while you're in the Laurie Brentford Y. 
Um, but actually, An Anas, thank you for mentioning about the leisure swim, because I'm recognizing that I failed to talk about just open gym. Um, a lot of the time people, you know, might not feel totally propelled into registering for programming and you don't have to. There is lots of very passive opportunities for you to get involved in the space or in some of our um, very passive programs. So open gym is available if you just want to set up a badminton net and play with your friends. Um, we do have some scheduled drop-in times that are organized to specific sports uh, so that it's not organized for, you know, refs and, and coaches or anything like that. But if you just want to come and, and shoot some hoops or swing at something, um, as well as some self-guided fitness classes, uh, I'm not sure if they have any of them set up right now, but in the cycle room, uh, as mentioned, awesome opportunity for some classes. There are some digital ones. You don't even have to go in and do a full class with people. If you just want to pop onto a bike and plug in one of their um, digital classes, that is helpful too. open lane swim. Um, I think there is lots of opportunity to, to find your niche in our facility and our programs. So. Does anybody have any other final experiences they want to share? Sorry, I, sorry. I just want to mention the varsity team again, just because I saw your jacket. Um, again, when joining the varsity team, uh, there's a fee at like, uh, Megan said, and at the start, um, once you pay that fee, you don't have to worry about travel costs, anything like that. But you also get that cool jacket uh, Megan's wearing. Um, I have one that I, in, behind me, and I also have a, the cool backpack, uh, which I could show, which is right there, which I am going to, because the backpack is just, I still use it, and it's one of my favorite backpacks I own. <laughs> We do have some pretty cool swag. We do. Yeah, you can kind of see that. But. So you can see even it has the Golden Hawk logo on it, and it is Adidas as well. So it's just a very cool thing about the Pharisee team. Sarah, you had something to add. Um, I just wanted to go off of what you were saying. Um, it, I love the YMCA. I think it's a really good place, especially if you're intimidated about working out, because I really was when I first came here. But um, everyone there supports you, especially the staff. You don't know how to use a machine. They will help you. Um, it's also, you don't have to take it so seriously. Like my roommates and I, we go to the leisure swim and we just mess around. Like you don't have to do lane swimming or anything like that. You can totally go to relax if you want to. The goal is to get you involved, get you moving, get something that can get you out of the house and out of your studies, right? Every student needs an outlet. Um, I, I didn't really touch on it because it is ever changing, but we host a variety of different um, wellness activities and programs as well. Uh, partnering with a lot of campus uh, groups to support Thrive Weeks, which are surrounded by mental health awareness and resource sharing. Um, even just, you know, one-on-one -on -one consultations and working with people that have been um, identified as in need of physical activity for um, supporting their own mental health. Uh, we, we love to be able to provide you with those, those scopes and those outlets that, that a lot of you won't necessarily tap into on your own. So we're here to give you that little push if you need it. Awesome. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions or ants or any more submissions to our question and answer. Um, so I am just going to, for a brief little moment here, reshare that, um, connect with us page so that if you have missed it, then you can take a screen um, shot of some of those social media platforms as well as our website. If you have any outstanding questions or you'd like to get some more information or details about any of the things we've spoken about today, please do not hesitate to reach out. If you connect with any of our social platforms, you will be speaking to me. Um, so happy to answer anything um, that might still be on your brain. But thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you to all my student leaders who joined me here to be able to provide your experience. That was completely invaluable. So thank you. Um, and we hope to see you on campus soon. If you have not visited yet, please come see the Laurier Brantford YMCA. Um, and as always, stay golden. So thanks for coming out, guys.